When we're working with GeoPandas, we're usually using it in a Jupyter Notebook because it's a nice visual environment where you can preview your maps and have a back and forth with your data and everything is just wonderful. So we are going to be doing this inside of a Jupyter Notebook. I'm assuming you are using a Jupyter Notebook too. The first thing you want to do is make sure you're using Python 3. You want to make sure it says Python 3 up in that right hand corner for two reasons. Number one, we installed all of our packages for Python 3. So if you're using Python 2, you probably won't be able to use them. The second reason why we're using Python 3 is because I don't like Python 2. So I hope you're using Python 3. So whenever you need to use software packages in Python, you need to import them. So for most GeoPandas work, we're going to need four lines, and those four lines are import pandas as pd, import geopandas as gpd, from shapely.geometry, import point, and percent mat plot lib inline. We run that and everything works. So this will allow us to do basically everything. So basic work with shape files, CSV files, join data sets together, and turn latitude and longitude into something mappable. If you want to make fancier maps or add different kinds of information or your geocoding or something like that, uh, you might need other imports, but this will cover your basic mapping and analysis situations. So let's take a look at each line and talk about why we're including it. So this first line here, import pandas as PD. Even though we're focusing on using geopandas, we're still probably going to use pandas. For example, geopandas can't read CSV files, can't read Excel files, and we're probably going to use them at some point. The as PD part, uh, it basically renames pandas. So instead of typing pandas every time we need to use pandas, we just need to type pd instead. Next up, import geopandas as gpd. As maybe you can tell, this is bringing in geopandas. Uh, it allows us to open shape files and plot maps of our data. And since we're renaming pandas as pd, might as well call geopandas gpd, right? It only makes sense. But honestly, I'm not renaming these for fun. I'm renaming them because everyone else does it. Usually, if everyone's doing something, it's not cool to do the same thing. But when you're programming, especially with pandas, it's great to stick to the kind of ways of programming and ways of typing that everyone else does. That way, if you're Googling questions or sharing your code with other people, it'll all seem much more familiar and normal and no one will be confused by things like PD or GPD. You'll say, oh, GPD, that's the normal way that people talk about geopandas. Next up, from shapely.geometry, import point. This gives us something called point from the Shapely library. As we've talked about before, the Shapely library deals with geometry. Things like points, polygons, stuff like that. The reason why we import this separately, GeoPandas kind of knows about this already, but we bring it in separately, is because we need points so we can turn latitudes and longitudes into geographic points on the globe. If we want to read in a CSV file that has latitude and longitude columns, GeoPandas can't do that. What we need to do is we need to hook up pandas and Shapely's geometry, and we throw it all together, and then eventually we turn that CSV into something that GeoPandas understands. But GeoPandas out of the box doesn't understand CSV files, so if we want to open CSV files, we need that point. Next up, we have percent sign matplotlib inline. This is called Jupyter Magic. Literally, it is called magic, I'm not lying. Um, when you put a percent sign in front of something, there's special commands that go to Jupyter that aren't Python commands. So 
So what this does is it changes the way that Jupyter works and it lets you see maps and graphs inside of your notebook instead of having to process them separately. So these are the basic lines you'll need to get involved with GeoPandas, opening shape files and CSV files, combining information from different data sources, but there are a few other commands that we'll talk about because you might run into them. For example, from shapely.geometry import polygon. In the same way that this line up here, importing point, allowed us to create custom points, this line here allows us to create custom polygons. Polygons are useful for drawing boundaries around areas and saying, give me everything inside of that. So say the continental United States. You can also combine both of these lines to import the two at once by saying from shapely geometry, import point comma polygon. And that'll work too if you need to get both of them in here. If you're making other specific kinds of maps or customizing your maps a lot, you might want to bring in a mapping library called Basemap or little tiny pieces of matplotlib, which will let you customize your maps. The way to do that is from MPL toolkits.basemap import basemap and import matplotlib pyplot as plt. You could make maps for a million years without ever having to use the base map library or without having to bring in matplotlib pyplot, um, but they are very, very useful for making custom maps, uh, for really making the maps look like you want them to look. We'll talk about them a lot more later, so you don't need to worry about them right now. Sometimes you end up with addresses, cities, things like that, that don't already have a latitude and a longitude associated with them. So you need some way to convert this address somewhere on the street, maybe it's your house, maybe it's a work, maybe the restaurant. You need some way to turn that into geography, some way to turn that into latitude and longitude. This is called either georeferencing or geocoding, and we installed a piece of software earlier called GeoPy that helps us do that. So if we want to use GeoPy to help us convert an address into a latitude and longitude, we need to do some importing. GeoPy comes with a lot of different geocoders because there are a lot of different services out there. So for example, this line here imports a geocoder called Nominatum, or we can import one called Google version three. It's the version three of the Google geocoder. So you need to do more stuff to set these up once you've pulled them in. But if you need to convert addresses into latitude and longitude, you will use a line like this. Uh, there are a lot of other geocoders too, so just check the documentation if you have a favorite. But honestly, truly, to do most spatial analysis, make nice simple maps, most of the time all you really need are these four lines from the top. If you use those, you'll be good to go. You might need to add the others in in certain situations, but every time I open up a notebook and I'm ready to do some mapping, ready to do some spatial analysis, I just cut and paste this in there and then I'm good to go. So hopefully now you have a few tips about what to import based on what you're trying to do and your future will be bright.